I'm sorry, girls. We forgot to defrost some of the nom nom stuff. And poor Grace, she's going back and forth, bowl to bowl. She's like, what is this? I mean, there's been canned food in it too, but she's looking for her real chicken. Poor thing. Yeah, I have coffee waiting for me. Two days now, sweetie's not had no coffee. I had caffeine pills though, with theanine in them. Caffeine derived from coffee, so I won't get a headache trying to fast better and not having the cream in the morning should be allowing me to do that trying to recover from that Super Bowl food I like it better when you bring me Lego packages right. but there was nothing in the mailbox I did check okay thank you You're welcome. I do have a couple on the way but probably not until Saturday or Monday. Yeah, well every morning when I open up the, the mailbox, I wonder if there'll be some Krispy Kreme donuts something in there, you know, when you've been fasting for 36 <laughs> hours, you're hungry. <laughs> I have visions of Legos and you have visions of donuts. That's pretty funny. Homer. Right. <laughs> Good morning. You don't have to go away, Morris. I'm coming with your food. Hi, I got you food. Oh, he's coming this way a little bit. Hi. Hello. Just so you know, back in the day, Gray would not let me touch her at all. And, um, but she was coming within three or four feet, but she wouldn't let me touch her. And, um, I used a stick to scratch her back and she really liked that and that's how that was her gateway to allowing me to touch her. Wow this human's rubbing my back with a stick this feels pretty good maybe I should let her touch me a little bit more so. Good morning Stripey. It doesn't take too much persuading to get him to come for the walk. Come on let's go for a walk let's go. I'm thinking it's gonna be raining later. It's just easier to go now while I'm already bundled and out here than to go inside and get all warm and start working on my Lego project. And oh, now I should get up and go for a walk. No, no, no. Gray's over here on the right and Tux is chasing Slate. Hello guys, that's my good kitties. That's my good kitties. Let's go back through the yard. This is the fun way back home. Hey Gray. You scratching your back? Don's on the phone with one of the guys from Europe and they're talking EVs. He's telling him what he needs for charging in his garage. Gotta, gotta talk to people if they ever ask. Any opportunity is a good one. Don's all ready for uh, talking to the reporter at WRAL. We're talking about EV tax and how to fund transportation in the future right. with the changing uh, landscape there. And I just thought it was really cute that... Zoom meeting. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I had pants on. <laughs> this summer I wouldn't guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, you might have shorts on. Shorts on, that's right. It's not as warm today as it was yesterday. This looks more like a normal February day. I think it's uh, low 50s out there. I'll let you know in a minute when Ruby is acclimated to being out of the garage. It's 2.30 uh, in the afternoon and Don is out for his run and I am out for my daily pogo and drive to see what's going on around town. Oops. Well, there goes the blood connection RV, I guess. I was going to call it a van. It's not really a van. I wonder if they, uh, are headed to Walmart. Although if I, if they were, they should have had turned right there. 
And the guys here at South Park are putting in mulch. Yeah, there is no shortage of town workers and trucks with mulch in this parking lot this afternoon. It looks good. It's a little strong if you roll the window down. I do see Don um, headed in my direction. I was afraid I'd missed him, but thankfully hey, not. Girl. Hey, Donnie. Hey. I'm downtown by the old uh, library. That building's still sitting empty, but they have put public parking up on the parking lot. I was just noticing this building here, um, the uh, beige colored bricks with the 123 up top. Um, they just redone the front of that and it looks really nice, new windows and everything. Left the original back of the building but put a new front on it. And then of course the blue tarp area is where the new parking, townhomes, retail shopping is going in. So pretty soon you won't be able to see over to Ann's Pizzeria there on Main Street because that building will be tall enough to block that. But um, yeah, just noticing what's been done in the corner. Of course, this KMB's Marketplace here, this whole parking lot was redone when the Performing Arts Center was redone. So lots of stuff continues to happen downtown. I didn't do anything on the outside of the corner candy store today, but I did finish up the inside minus waiting for a couple of 2x2 two two white tiles. The bar stools are in. The uh, little shelf is in over here. The, the uh, ice cream freezer. The cake display. Um, this over here. I guess there are supposed to be a little gumball machine over there. I'm still trying to decide if I want to put that. But the inside of it's done. That was mostly what I did on this today. And then um, I am working on now adding... I changed all the windows out on the mineral shop. They were green and blue and they, they were all mismatched. And now I'm working on putting all the decoration. There's a lot of gold that goes up here. Um, it's on both sides. And uh, probably getting ready to stop for dinner and um, pick back up on it tomorrow. But, um, yeah, that's where I am now. It's kind of good having both of them go back and forth. That way, hopefully, I've always got something ready to go to work on on one or the other of them. So Don and I had an interesting opportunity today. Yep, sure did. We were invited to join a Zoom call with uh, a few other members of Triangle Tesla, not as representatives of Triangle Tesla, but just some other local EV owners that happen right. to be um, in our organization. And uh, the, the Zoom call was run by uh, Brian Schrader at WRAL. Our local uh, NBC affiliate. Uh, television station. You know, WRAL, Azalea Gardens, wow. they have EV chargers in the parking lot. They're very, um, seems to be zero emission. Friendly. Yes. Yes. So the whole thing was about um, what do we think about the proposed increase in the yearly EV registration fee. That's but right. it was a little more complicated more than that complex. because it boils down to North Carolina's looking to um, how they're going to pay for transportation for infra roads, uh, repair new projects in the future, that kind of thing. So anyway, we were on there today. I, I was on my computer. Don was on his computer. Um, and um, I probably spoke more than I thought I was going to. Yeah, I, I, I think Marion did really well. But anyway, I, I wanted to... Let you know we had done that. I'm going to put up just a picture right now of uh, us on the Zoom. I think that's okay to do. It's going to be turned into a 90-second clip probably Friday night, he said. And when if it's up there, Don records the news. We'll all stand there and record it with yeah. my camera and put it in Friday's video. But um, highlight it for us, Donnie. Hi highlight, highlight it for us. That's what I've got you over there for. But you know, now that I said that, the battery's flashing, and we're going to take a quick pause while I change the battery. Yeah. Elon, fix the battery. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. What happened is last year, um, the governor formed a, um, a commission, the NC First Commission, and it's to help stabilize or find uh, ways to fund uh, the Department of Transportation in North Carolina. Uh, a lot of states, uh, in fact, I would go out on them and say every state is going through this uh, same basic uh, 
process in one way or another. Some of the states are ahead. The uh, highway fuel tax, the motor fuel tax that most states and the federal government place on each gallon of gasoline, you pay that at the pump. It's, it's in the price of the, that you pay at the pump. Uh, the revenues are falling. Uh, the reason the revenues are falling are cars are more efficient, getting more miles per gallon. Therefore, they travel more miles using less gasoline, so the revenue falls. And obviously, uh, the thing that um, which got us involved in this uh, discussion is the fact that electric cars and plug-in uh, hybrids uh, they don't use or are use very little or no gasoline whatsoever. So there is no uh, motor vehicle fuel tax. So um, North Carolina is trying to figure out ways to stabilize and catch up, actually, the funding of the NC Department of Transportation. So um, we were brought on specifically to talk about one of the proposals. We've talked about it before, and that's the concept of the uh, alternative tax for EV owners. All EVs pay an, an annual fee. Uh, it was $130. has now gone up this year to $140.25. One of the proposals by the commissions to take immediate effect, uh, they're proposing that that fee be increased to $190 per year per vehicle. Uh, they say that's because it would make it more fair. Uh, in their example, the reason that how they came up with why is $190 more fair and $130 less fair is that they based the $190 on the fact that a typical gasoline-powered uh, car that gets 22 miles to the gallon and drives 12,000 miles per year, which pays like 35.7 cents per mile, I mean per gallon, is going to use right at $200, like $198.50. They're going to pay that if they drive 12,000 miles. So they figure that electric vehicles probably drive 12,000 miles. and So that's how they came up. Well, $190 is a lot closer to $200 than $140. And of course, plug-in hybrids, um, they don't pay any uh, additional tax so they've recommended immediately start charging uh, plug-in hybrids a, a, a fee although they do buy some gasoline but nowhere near as much so those were the reason they got us on and they wanted to talk about uh, Ryan wanted to know what our thoughts were on uh, on that proposed tax and just in, in general you know what's fair and my um, my concern was the the flat tax isn't isn't um can certainly would be work well for mary ann uh, she drives or we have drove ruby as much as twenty five thousand miles in a year and we're only paying um 140 dollars so if we were driving a gasoline car 25 that it would be like 400 bucks in gas taxes so um you know it, using their numbers so it's obviously an advantage but um i also shared that we know somebody the uh, the mayor's wife yep drives a little smart car a ev little, smart car a little electric smart car and i think i don't think there's any way that she does twelve thousand miles a year she probably doesn't do five thousand miles a year she just buzzes it around town you know uh in that and she doesn't take long trips in it not that i know of so um i think that the flat tax uh idea really isn't uh the best solution i admit that it is immediate uh, basically, they could simply go down there to the computer, uh, type in a new fee for electric cars, and instead of us getting charged one hundred and forty dollars, we'd be charged one hundred and ninety dollars. So, I do get it that it has immediate effect. The money would come in this year, but that's not the solution. The other thing the NC Commission reported that even if they do this, um, over the next ten years, it'll it would only add, I believe. 300 million dollars it's like a smidge in the total this needs right. yeah they're, they're looking for they they need an additional 20 billion dollars just to levelize the over 10 years to levelize and catch up plus the the current money in other words besides all the money they're getting in fees today like the 130 dollars they need an an over the next 10 years, they need to raise another $20 billion. That's $4 billion a year. 
well, obviously, over 10 years, $300 million is uh, not very much towards that goal. So they need a better solution. The fuel tax was great in the 20th century, back when there was all gasoline cars, uh, that, uh, you know, you only got 20 miles to the gallon if you were lucky. I mean, if you got 20 miles to the gallon in, in a car in the 80s, you you were happy. I mean, you were down in the teens, most cars that, back in those days. So a gallon of the gas didn't uh, burn up very many highway miles. And the, the gas tax um, was a really effective way to spread, the, spread around. The more you drove, uh, the heavier your vehicle the more gasoline it used, all those things played into it. So um, all that stuff is changing, uh, mobility is coming, um, things of those natures, uh, car sharing. So they're trying to come up with a new new model. Um, they've proposed long term several uh, recommendations to be investigated. One of them uh, that we probably weren't very much in favor of was the last mile tax and this is for Amazon deliveries or delivery vehicles basically whenever you order something on the internet that you pay an additional uh, double the sales tax in other words instead of the st the eight percent sales tax we're paying or seven percent sales tax we're paying now you pay 14 percent yeah I wasn't for this yeah, at all yeah. no don't all, mess with my home delivery hear all, me loud and clear politicians all, anything <laughs> is going to be shipped and so there that that didn't sound, we didn't like that idea too much at all. But the other way is to reduce the motor vehicle tax and to uh, start charging a sales tax uh, or increase the sales tax by uh, anywhere between a half a cent to three quarters of a cent sales tax for the state. But of course they do it that way so that the county and the city can tack on another quarter percent each. So really, that half a cent is really going to be a one cent sales tax. And the three quarter cent will probably be either a one percent or a 1.25 percent sales tax because the cities and the counties always uh, add on to the any increase in state sales tax. They always add the city and the county to that. So um, that would be on everything, your, your groceries and uh, um, all types of things. Since roads are like energy is something that um, is built into the cost of everything. Uh, you couldn't get to your job if you didn't have a road to drive on. Uh, you, uh, you couldn't get your groceries uh, to wouldn't be delivered to the supermarket unless there was a truck and the truck had a road to drive on. So you know that basic infrastructure of roads really is used even though you may not drive a car personally yourself everything that you need in today's world pretty much was delivered um, at least the last mile was always delivered by a truck uh, so it was it was brought to you uh, on a road it you know uh, so I get it um, that uh, they have to come up with new ways and maybe the sales tax uh, which is regressive but so is the gasoline uh, motor fuels tax is regressive um, you know the people who can least afford it pay the same as everybody else uh, but this uh, it might be a better way to go forward uh, I was in favor of one of the proposals which is a mileage space uh, tax that you know every year you report your mileage and they charge you a fee but I want that based on also the vehicle weight because the, the NC Commission did talk about the fact that a 40 ton truck which is the maximum 80,000 pounds semi truck uh, one of those does the equivalent of over 8,000 passenger cars damage in other words the equivalent damage to the road of a 40 ton truck is the equivalent of 8,000 cars. So if, um, is, um, as big as difference between a, a battery electric vehicle and a uh, gasoline car. They're, the weight's getting closer. And plus, you have to understand, most of the vehicles are now larger. They're pickup trucks, large SUVs, minivans. And those are all in the weight uh, category of most SUVs. Yeah, maybe when the Cybertruck comes out or other electric vehicles come out, they'll they'll increase. But right now, 
I think that the uh, average EV, the weight of an average EV is, is probably less than the weight of the average passenger vehicle in the U.S. because of the minivans, SUVs, and those are their larger vehicles. So um, I think the weight's important. Now, I think the heavier the car, and uh, that, I'm kind of, um, and I, I brought this up with Marianne, the fact that people drive a pickup truck that has a 15,000 pound gross vehicle weight, 14,500 gross vehicle weight, they had to pay taxes on the gross vehicle weight. Um, they may not drive their pickup trucks to and from church or to and from um, other places. They may decide they don't need the pickup truck as bad as they thought. Uh, right now, you know, they, they don't load them up often, but they have the capability, of course, being quite heavy. And if they had to pay for the peak, the gross vehicle weight of the vehicle, uh, then maybe that uh, would incentivize people not to drive such big, heavy vehicles just to go to and from school and to and from the office. I mean, if you need a work vehicle, you need a truck, pickup truck for work, no problem. But most people, most trucks, if you look around, the bed of the pickup truck is almost always empty or it might have one little uh, lawnmower in it or something of this nature so I, I would say uh, we need to do anything and I think the vehicle weight would would tie into that so the mileage and the vehicle but there's privacy concerns uh, of course with the um, you know how fair is it uh, if you put electronic trackers or use your phone to track um, then it gets to be privacy, but you could just do a simple once a year at your vehicle inspection, just read the mileage. And of course people would say, well, I drove out of state. Well, you know, okay, sirrah, sirrah. You would have paid out of state fuel taxes if you were uh, doing that. But also I, I want to say this, uh, mileage based and vehicle weight would be, uh, in my opinion, should apply to all vehicles, not just electric cars. Yeah, they wanted the pilot program with for the, the mileage thing to be EVs, and that we were, and with the thought of implementing it by 2030, and we're like, like we need 10 years to figure out if we can do this or not. And Oregon's already got a pilot program. Right. Don was watching a YouTube video yeah. on that, so that was a little odd that it would. Why we can't pilot it with some some gas cars too? I don't know why it just needs to be piloted with EVs. Right, I think you could do an opt-in. Uh, I think, right, and it was an optional, optional pilot program that they were proposing for. Right. I mean, if you're it. really adamant about your um, being tracked where you go, then you're not going to drive a Tesla. You're just going to forget that. And I'm, I guess you're not going to drive a Taycan or e-tron or any of these other ones. Well, uh, what is it, OnStar? Yeah. They yeah, all I mean, they all can sort know of... Know where you are. Yeah. But, you know, you... You, you, you're all that right. That cell phone in your pocket, yeah. yeah. Oh, let's not even talk about the world's greatest spying device uh, ever created. And people, you know, can't leave home without it. Uh, so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is I think some of that privacy stuff, it, it's legitimate, but I think there's solutions to it. Right. I think you covered everything we said today with one point that I made on the call that I want to make again. Sure. I have a real concern because at one point in my life, I did live pay to check to paycheck oh, yeah. with a uh, lump sum I owe something at any That's point. Right. Like I always paid State Farm a little extra to uh, pay them Split once it. a month yeah, before. Right. Now they don't charge extra, don't charge but they used to charge like $3 or something to do that. I did that. I, I was on the CPNL equal payment plan on my electricity so I couldn't get unexpected high month electric bills it was it didn't work well let me tell you it didn't work yeah. well but besides that and they'd have to catch me up with a lump sum payment but besides that it was a nice thought that you know you only pay $170 a month and that's every month out of the year yeah. so you know what your electric bill is going to be so I've been I one of my younger days I remember paycheck to paycheck quite clearly right. and um I, so I'm against any of these taxes that are a lump sum. So if you're only going to read the odometer once a year and some poor person that for their work puts uh, 40,000 miles a year on their car oh, yeah. and all of a bill. sudden they get this really big bill and you just expect them to cough that up, uh, I think that's not good. See, the, 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 thing, the, the beauty of the gas taxes, well, first off, is all them people down at Sheets, they don't have any idea 
how many cents are they're paying yeah, they, per they, gallon. Brian five year point, five yeah. years ago, I didn't know how much I was paying in yeah. tax in that gas gallon of gasoline. I didn't even know there was a federal and a state portion to the tax yeah. in the thing. Maybe I heard the tax is a large part of it or something. But anyway, it's like thirty five cents, That's right? Just the state. Just the state. It's it's, it's it's quite quite a bit so, and then on second you know that it, at least it's taken out every time i drive yeah i, I can't get behind on can't that tax behind. i can either put gas in my car or i can't right. i've either paid the tax prior to you know the trip or 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 i haven't so i really think you know i'm not opposed i, I think the mileage thing with the weight part two hi midnight that would be really nice if you wouldn't get there right now um <laughs> Yeah, you lay down, buddy. There you go. Right. Um, Camera hog. I think, uh, you know, the mileage space with some weight con considerations is great, but I don't know that we want to just like state inspection once a year and then you owe yeah, it there. you. Point. I don't know that that's going to work. I think we need to quarterly maybe or... Well, I don't know. It's complicated. That's why, to me, that is a fair, but can people actually pay it when it comes time to pay it? Is a, yeah, is a $190 is going to bite also. Oh, yeah. Well, we talked about, that's another thing we talked about, is will it disincentivize uh, people to buy an EV right. if they, oh, those EVs, they pay $190 a year, and then they have no idea and why. they have to pay the other tax also. Right, right. well, and they, ha to. They, and they have the right registration fees. They have no idea why they're paying that. They don't understand it's because Enough. they're not paying the gas tax for the miles, because they really may not understand they're paying the gas, you know, the yeah, think no, about no, the no. gas tax. So, and I think we all agreed that it would a little bit. And then it puts me, people like me and Don and the others on the call of, when people ask us about our EV stuff, explaining, well, yeah, but that $190 is to make up for the gas tax you don't pay every time you don't put gas in your, you know, I mean, I think there's a good, an acceptable story there, but it's people like me and Don will have to care enough to message that out because it's going to get lost. It's just going to be, oh, stay away from EVs. They're, they're taxed really high. You shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't yeah. buy an EV. I agree. We didn't say, I mean, we're we not saying not that, that, but that's right. just, but that that's could, that could happen. happen. It certainly could. The word of mouth. We, you know, I've always said, you know, that electric cars are catching on when your neighbor up the street has an electric car or your brother-in-law has an electric car. Something like this tax could stop that from happening when your neighbor up the street says, yeah, I bought this thing, and then they sent me this huge tax bill every year. I have to pay it every year, so I wish I hadn't bought You know, I could see those kinds of conversations happening, and that would actually slow down the adoption. Yeah, I guess the thought of going into this is the current gas tax is fair for all of the people that are driving the ICE cars, and maybe that initial well, assumption is not so good either. Yeah. It was it was more fair, but now I mean you've got cars that are getting 55 miles to the gallon, and uh, you know they're paying almost no gas tax compared to the the SUVs getting 18. So, but it is it, it certainly aspects uh, of the motor vehicle uh, um, motor fuels tax is 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 fair, but as I said, this whole revenue picture. We need a 21st century solution. I, I, obviously, uh, the motor fuels, we all hope that uh, gasoline continues to uh, be less and less uh, fuel of choice for transportation and diesel. Uh, same thing. We are hoping that that, uh, in, you know, in a few years, most of the cars will be electric. There's a lot of advantages. You know, having talked about the health advantages and all these other things that you get by uh, driving an electric car uh, from the particulate matter, you know, the soot and the diesel exhaust and all those types of things. So uh, I, I think that they're they're going to do, the, I'm very confident that they, they're going to enact the $190 fee. They're also going to ch charge an additional um, uh, utility uh, uh, tax on the purchase of a vehicle, not just electric vehicles, but all vehicles. But I hope that they... Um, they quit uh, singling out electric or, or gas vehicles. Let's just treat them all. You know, let's, let's come up with a solution that moves forward all cars uh, the same in the future.